y'all really need to check in on those middle classers because I'm telling you I just went to the grocery store I bought about five days worth of breakfast lunch and dinner some fresh produce maybe a, ch a bag of chips and a, a gallon of juice and let me tell you four hundred dollars what have my check gone you know we make too much to get any ebt with any kind of government assistance anything i'm telling you it's a hard life out here especially for those middle class people so y'all need to check in because we out here hurting okay <laughs> guys are going and going and going i know you gotta be at the same level of mental health as me <laughs> every day it's something new between the fucking news and the fucking stupid biden and stupid trump and this this country's fucked every day we're spending more and more money none of us are getting ahead the rich people are the ones that are fucking getting ahead. I'm tired of struggling. I've done everything I can. I'm trying to be a good man. I take care of my daughter. I take care of my wife. The best I can. I can't keep going. Every day it's something new. And then on top of that, as if you're not trying to spend money, you have to. <laughs> Fucking everything's expensive. I own a painting company. I still can't fucking make it. I'm fucking trying, man. I went to Target yesterday and bought two bottles of hair product, a bottle of shampoo, a box of trash bags, and one Halloween decoration, $70 on my Target red card. That's with my 5% discount. My son's looking at the cart and going, Mom, this was $70. We didn't even get anything. Yeah, I know, kid. And he doesn't even remember a time when you could get a two-bedroom apartment in a decent area of town for $600 a month. Now a one-bedroom apartment in a mediocre part of town is two grand a month. Gas is five forty nine a gallon. It cost me sixty five dollars to fill up my tank. Before COVID, my grocery bill per month was three hundred fifty dollars. Now it's six hundred dollars a month, and I buy the exact same amount of groceries. This shit is out of control. What does the bourgeoisie think that the outcome of this is going to be? They cannot possibly believe that extracting every last dime out of the working class by inflating all of the prices and paying us poverty wages is a sustainable economic model. And the thing is, is that I, I can be mad at the bourgeoisie all day long, but they are doing exactly what is expected. They are greedy sociopaths. This is what they do. I am more mad at Americans because instead of uniting against this common enemy who is robbing us blind, we are fighting over whether or not drag queens can read books to children. At what point are we going to stop taking this shit lying down, put our foots down and say, fuck this and not allow it anymore? We cannot even afford to live in this country. We can't even afford to die in this country. The Republican Party is bought and paid for by the same greedy sociopaths who are robbing you, me, and our families blind every day. They are manipulating you into believing that they are going to save you from the problems that they created in your life. They have not walked a single inch in your working class shoes. They have no idea the struggle that you and I go through every day in this economy just to feed our families and keep them safe. They are gaslighting you into believing that I am your enemy so that you're distracted while they continue to do their dirt behind your back because they know that if you knew what they were doing, you wouldn't vote for them anymore. Why are you listening to them? 
The Democratic Party, with the exception of a very small few, is filled with weak and spineless politicians who placate to everyone just so that they can get reelected because they want to maintain some semblance of power in Congress. Why are you placing all of your faith and hope in this party to save us? Your religious leaders are funded by the same corporate sponsors who have bought your politicians and they are weaponizing your faith against you so that you are distracted by a made up enemy, your gay neighbor, or your liberal coworker. So that you are not paying attention to the extreme financial crimes that they are committing against all of us right under your nose. In the richest country in the world, half a million people are homeless when there are more than enough homes to house them. And millions of children are hungry or food insecure, having their one free meal taken away from them at school. Ten-year-olds are being forced to bear the child of their rapist. People are rationing their insulin and dying because they cannot afford health care. The water's polluted. The air is polluted. The soil is devoid of nutrients because we have oversaturated it in pesticides. We're not going to be able to grow our own food in the coming decades. The planet is literally dying. And they are putting hotels up in space and telling you that they can't afford to pay you a living wage and you are believing them. This period is going to go down in the history books as one of the most epic failures that America ever allowed to happen. Future generations are going to study this time in history and ask themselves, why did they not do anything? How could they not see? And if you're sitting behind your phone right now and thinking to yourself, it's not me, it's those goddamn weirdo trans kids, then you are the people that they will be talking about. Wake the fuck up. At this point, I think we might be living at our in-laws house until, you know, we get old and gray because the housing market is absolutely ridiculous. It's so sad because back in the day, you're able to just go to school, get a good job, get married, be able to buy a house, start a family and possibly be able to stay part time at home, even with the children to help raise them. Now it's like, no, you get married. Where are you living? Maybe we're going to live in a shoebox. Maybe we're going to be homeless living on the street because why is a one bedroom, one bath like eight hundred thousand dollars? Like, I'm just trying to wrap my head around how things are going right now because it's like it's pretty hopeless for this generation for us that are trying to start our lives and get a place it's like rent is absolutely insane you can't save any money to be able to buy a place they don't want us to own anything and they literally want to like destroy your dreams of of starting a life it's just so embarrassing so on today's episode of why are they charging that much for rent my downstairs neighbor okay exact same floor plan that i have i signed my lease in january and I know there's going to be people that's like, that's cheap or that's expensive, but whatever. Two bed, two bath, 1,100 square feet. I pay $1,639 before they add stuff. But my base rent is $1,639. After everything, it's $1,715. That's what I pay every month. Okay, so $1,639. So my downstairs neighbors lived there for like two months and then moved out. I would love to know the tea on that, I would. And if you've been here since my Florida days, I'm not talking about the downstairs neighbors that called the cops. That's a whole separate story in a whole separate state, okay? Now, now we're in Texas. So anyways, downstairs mo neighbors move out. They moved out in Florida too, but also Texas. And I'm like, hmm. So I go on the website to see how much they're renting that apartment for. Keep in mind my 1639. 22.47. I know every realtor's argument is going to be like, yeah, but it's the summer. It's the peak time to move. Is that not like a $600 increase in the last five months? I'm going to need to have like a chat with whoever signed that lease genuinely because you're getting robbed. They haven't even moved in yet. I don't know if anyone has, but it was the only two bed, two bath apartment open for 2247. This morning I read that if your parents make 100K 40 years ago in 1983, then you'd have to make $292,000 in 2023 just to have the same purchasing power adjusted for inflation. 300K is the new 100K. Guys, talk about Halloween, talk about horror, talk about scary. 80% of Americans have run out of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Federal Reserve just published a study stating that only 20% of the richest Americans still have excess savings after the pandemic. And the other 80% have less cash on hand than before the pandemic began. Households saved a combined $2.3 trillion during the various pandemic lockdowns. Like the savings rate was going up and it's estimated that 1.3 trillion of that has now been spent. Listen to me, listen to me. 
I will never be able to afford a house. I will never be able to afford a house. Home prices are rising nationwide as inflation remains stubborn and mortgage rates remain high as Americans compete for fewer available homes. Home prices in March were four tenths of a percent compared to February. Now that's the second month in a row that we have seen gains. My parents' house that is $195,000 back in 96 is now worth like five to $700,000. My children will never be able to have the life I live because I can't afford to do it. I don't think any of us thought when we were growing up that owning a home would be a luxury. Like maybe we thought it would be a bit difficult, but not like a luxury that basically only the rich will be able to afford. No one that works a full-time job should be facing homelessness. And that's what my family is facing right now. Everybody in America kind of knows like, it's over. Like. There will be no recovery. Like, this is not like the other times. This ain't like 2008 where, oh, we'll crash and then we'll get back up. Because right now, this economy, this world is set up to make average American families fail. If I can get my hands on a nice lump sum of money, baby, I'm buying land in another country and I'm out of here because there's nothing left here but struggle. When are we going to get back to the days when somebody can support themselves and live comfortably with just one income. I have a full-time job that years ago, I could have raised a family on what I make. And it's like, now I have to do side hustles, you know, to supplement my income because it's gotten so fucking expensive to live. It's crazy you have to work like 75% of your life, like donate, give up 75% of your time pretty much just to literally survive, just to live not to live comfortably not to live well just to live but it's like i woke up all of a sudden and my insurance has doubled food has fucking tripled gas is so expensive electric bill over double my fucking rent went up i can't be the only one that's drowning everybody is going through this bullshit everyone can't go to canada can't go to the uk everyone is is dealing with just not being able to sustain life. I've never had so little money in my entire life. All of my money goes towards my bills and food for me to eat. And half the time, I have to choose between filling my car with gas or eating. I wish that I could just have a job and do my job and go to work every day and it would just pay for life. It would pay for a roof over my head, it would pay for food on my table, it would pay for medical bills, it would pay enough for me to like save money so I could retire one day, you know, like basic things. I am 36 years old and I have nothing to show for 20 plus years of work. Did you know 70% of Americans don't even have $1,000 in their savings account? Well, why does that matter? It matters because if you don't have $1,000 in your savings account, then you need to budget your money better. The expenses should be last. That means you're living above your means. I don't need to budget. Prices either need to go down or my pay needs to go up. I think I'm someone who's fairly reasonable with my spending. I pay my bills. I take care of my needs first and foremost. I take care of my wants within a reasonable parameter. Like I don't spend exorbitant amounts of money to the point where I need to track how much I'm spending because money's just flying out of my ears. Things just cost too much. So again, my pay needs to go up. Literally everything he just said was facts. Because at this point, I think like, we pass surviving like we, we fed everybody's fed up bro everybody is fed up they tell you to go to college you go to college you get debt you come out of college you can't even find a job because you don't got experience then they talking about internships without pay when i found out i was like what i'm giving you time and you're not paying me and I no people are really out here like contemplating if they should pay the bills or they should like pay the medicine like it, it it's i don't Cause it's absolutely absurd that like we're living in times where like at this point you got to pay to die. Like God forbid you break your arm or you go get a checkup at the ER. Like then like the old heads are absolutely clueless. Cause they're telling you, Oh, like you're just lazy. This generation is just lazy. Go out and get a job. Like the whole American dream book. Stop, stop. Because if the next old person that comes to me and tells me that, Oh, it's because I'm lazy. I'm not. I'm not trying hard enough. Or I, you, you see how dumb. You see how dumb you sound. Now, now you got to get slapped because 
we're not living in the same time, so I'm gonna need you to wake up, wake up. Great, so our two bedrooms right now, um, they have no view, no updated appliances, neighbors are a little loud. Those are going for 3,900 right now, which is a steal. We do ask that you make five times the rent, so at 3,900, you need to at least make $20,000 a month in this economy, which is great. To rent our semi-luxury apartments with loud neighbors, uh, roaches here and there. You will need a 760 credit score or higher. Higher is better. Um, and we also have no security cameras in the garage. So if your car gets broken into, we don't care. Um, we do also require an $8,000 security deposit that you may or may not get back. <laughs> leaning towards the may not we do also require first and second month's rent to move in for our lease terms we do have a 36 and a 48 uh, we do need to see your entire um leases rent inside your bank account to move in so um that'll be 3900 times that um 36 month lease i'm talking so we'll need to see $140,000 inside your bank account right now to move in. We'll also need the $8,000 security deposit on top of the first and second month's rent to move in. 